A very good morning to you. Welcome to Hockenheim and race two in the Porsche Carrera Cup Germany. Uh, what a race we're expecting. Race duration, 16 laps this track, 4.574 kilometers, featuring 16 turns. Six of them left-handers and 10 of them right-handers. Welcome to the Porsche Carrera Cup. Never fails to entertain with great race action. And uh, we're expecting that very much to be the case today. Very dry out there, unlike uh, yesterday where the weather conditions were really rather less than pleasurable. Certainly not very warm at the moment as uh, some of our Porsche dignitaries down there on the uh, grid ahead of the start of this race. So the starting order will be Larry Tenvorder, Jackson Evans and Yap Van Lagen going from P1, 2 and 3. More to tell you about Jackson Evans and Yap Van Lagen in uh, but a few moments time. So Alexander Polish then. Thomas Volkmar then, and uh, Bastian Thram from uh, Porsche Deutschland uh, Marketing there, down there on the grid as well. Ahead of the uh, start of this race. So yesterday then, as the uh, cars were released, Larry Tenvorder doing a uh, great job, but so too Jackson Evans, who managed to put himself ahead of Yap Van Lagen and occupy that uh, P2 place right at the start of the race. But Larry Tenvorder doing a very, very good job indeed in making sure that he owned the start of the race and converted his uh, P1 position into the race lead. Regrettably, Mikhail Amamula and Igor Valilko had a coming together and Amamula spun and uh, would end up uh, 16th. 30 second penalty was awarded to uh, Valilko for that. And uh, as you can see, the uh, safety car was deployed following uh, the uh, uh, collision there, which uh, Jean-Baptiste Simonau, considerable damage to his car. Larry Tenvorda would take the checkered flag. Jan van Lagen uh, second, Jackson Evans third, but uh, both of those cars, P2 and P3, were disqualified for uh, illegal and unauthorized underbodies. Christoph Huber was uh, very pleased with Larry Tenvorder's performance and he celebrated atop his car. A great job done by the Netherlands best race based racer, Larry Tenvorder. So back down on track then, ahead of the start of this uh, Porsche Carrera Cup race two. The cars, you can hear them making their way around the uh, track now, heading towards uh, the uh, grid formation and uh, lining up. Now, Porsche this year with a uh, completely new youth development initiative, which is called the uh, Porsche Carrera Cup uh, Deutschland Talent Pool. It was launched last season. Here's Thomas Volkmar once again. So Thomas Volkmar then is uh, um, discussing the uh, situation yesterday, which saw uh, Jackson Evans disqualified uh, due to a uh, potentially illegal underbody of the car.
So talking about the underbody, which caused the uh, disqualification yesterday for uh, Jackson Evans and also for Yap Van Lagen, incidentally. So uh, whatever the issues were, I am given to understand that the uh, teams have appealed the decision and uh, we will see what happens. You can see the Larry 10 Vordicari is lined up already. Now, I was mentioning about the uh, new uh, youth initiative, which was launched last season. 16 uh, promising young guns benefited from the extensive support. And for 2019, the concept, which includes comprehensive coaching from the Porsche professional uh, Wolf of Hensler and fitness tests and individualized training plans, media and mental training, as well as three sets of tires, all going to be developed further. Uh, moreover, the number of participants will be capped and the quality as well as the support differed will offered rather will increase significantly so we were looking at the uh, larry ten vortecar victorious yesterday uh, jackson evans actually uh, uh, finished the race uh, in a very very good position indeed uh, but uh, ended up uh, being disqualified as indeed did uh, yap van lagen so the uh, race result was amended accordingly so Yap Van Lagen and Jackson Evans then, showing the pace that they did yesterday, uh, they were the drivers that potentially could take it to Larry Ten Vorder. So Louis Henkerfan then talking about the uh, youth development program that I was discussing just a few moments ago. Alex Arkinaka then. Arkinaka, a name for a long time associated with uh, Porsche Carrera Cup. Well, clearly, uh, the fitness of the drivers is taken very seriously. And So this uh, talent pool then, everything being monitored to ensure that these young guys can be shaped into the racing talent that we know they have the potential to deliver. Janas Fitcher there, who sadly didn't take part in the race yesterday due to a crash in qualifying. Nicholas Scholl there, the youngest driver taking part in the Porsche Carrera Cup this year at just 17 years of age. So there we have it then, the uh, initiative which was started last year. Leon Koffler will be going from uh, P9 on the grid then for MSG HRT Motorsport in the number 77 car. And uh, the number 77 car, a non-classifier yesterday in the race, so we'll be hoping for better things today. So we look at the uh, number 77 car then uh, from the MSG team of Leon Koffler. And Gustav Malia for Fort Racing then, a 155.736 was uh, enough to give him 10th uh, on the grid for uh, Gustav Malia for Fort Racing then. Incidentally, I um, followed their team in from my hotel this morning. Here is uh, Thomas Volkmar once again. Just a few minutes away then from the uh, warm-up lap. The Porsche Carrera Cup then uh, down there on track, ready for their race two. Drivers from 11 different nations taking part in the uh, Carrera Cup. Uh, Tony Wolf in uh, car number 13, who uh, 
Uh, car number 14 qualifies in uh, P13, I should say. Uh, finished P8 yesterday, Tony Volfer, uh, who at times looked really, really blisteringly quick. And there is Tim Zimmerman for the uh, Black Falcon team going from P14 on the grid. Tim Zimmerman yesterday only just off the podium following those two disqualifications. So he ended up uh, classifying P4 for Tim Zimmerman. And uh, good to see Tim at uh, the... Uh, the sharp end of the results yesterday, and uh, we'll be hoping for good things today as we zoom in uh, right at the back of the grid. You can see there the uh, all pink BWT Lechna car of uh, John Baptiste Simonab, and I think the car just ahead was Yanis Fitcher. Now, Yanis Fitcher didn't take part in the race yesterday following the crash and qualifying, so hopefully, Yanis Fitcher's car, they've worked hard to repair that and get Yanis Fitcher uh, back out on track once again. Thankfully, he sustained no injuries, and Yanis Fitcher, of course, driving from the uh, Team Project One J. ABR amalgamation for this year. There is uh, Mikhail Amamula who's going from P7 on the grid again for the champion. I really feel that he's outplaced in terms of uh, qualifying, just couldn't get it together in uh, qualifying. And Mikhail Amamula finishing in P9 yesterday. When you mention the name Amamula, and P9, the two things just don't weld together. You don't expect Mikhail Amamula to be so far back in the order. Of course, he got turned around. But even so, his qualifying was not brilliant. So there is Jackson Evans, who really had great pace yesterday. Let's see if he can replicate that in better conditions today. But Larry Tenvorder was so, so impressive. And you can see uh, just the uh, incredible talent that uh, Larry Tenvorda has. He's moved teams this year, uh, gone from the uh, Project One team where he was and uh, now moves to the Overdrive uh, racing by uh, Huber team, which of course is uh, run by Christoph Huber. As the cars are released then on their installation lap, this is the Porsche Carrera Cup Germany. And the sound of those cars roaring off the start line here at the 4.574 kilometer Hockenheim circuit is a joy to behold. A very good morning to you. Welcome to a cold Hockenheim, but a dry Hockenheim. Igor Valilko, Leon Koffler, Gustav Malia, Tony Wolf. So the cars, Larry Tenvorder then making his way through turn number two. Now, a high over headshot you can see through turn three. And uh, turn four, which leads us on to the Parabolica here at uh, Hockenheim, that sweeping left-hander where then all your force has to go through the middle pedal as you try and break for the hairpin, which is turn number six. You can see some harmless high cloud above. Some of them are grey, but we're reliably informed by our meteorological friends that uh, we should have dry running all day today. So Larry Tenvorder then, uh, weaving from side to side, trying to generate some temperature into those uh, tyres. And here is the grid in full for you. Larry Tenvorder from P1, Jackson Evans P2, then it's Jap Van Lagen, Henrik Skoog, Burke Bessler, what a great job he did yesterday. Uh, Luca Rettenbacher, Mikhail Amamula and Igor Valilko, ahead of Leon Koffler, Gustav Melia, Julian Andlauer, Lucas Ertl, Tony Wolf, Tim Zimmerman, Dylan Pereira, Stefan Raikov, who was the best of the AM drivers, uh, Louis Henkefend. Sandro Kaibach, Richard Wagner, Nicholas Scholl, the youngest driver on the grid, Reese Barr, Matthias Jezerich, Sebastian Dorm, and uh, the rest of the order there, including Carlos Rivas, Alex Arkenaka, Georgi Donkov, and then Soren Spring, Yanis Fitcher, David Kogman, and Jean Baptiste Simonauer. So the cars making their way through the hairpin and uh, heading down towards uh, turn number seven, which is taken absolutely flat in these Carrera Cup cars. Uh, of course, we race the uh, 911 GT3 Cup car, which is the model 991 Generation 2. Uh, this, the uh, third year in the Porsche Carrera Cup that we've uh, raced this particular iteration of the car. Air temperature, look, 11 degrees. Sorry, I think it feels colder than that. Track temperature, definitely dry and uh, 17 degrees. So the leading cars then are already heading towards the final two turns and then the cars will uh, park up on the grid awaiting the start of the race. Yesterday, Larry Tenvorder did a great job and uh, he was able to get the start absolutely nailed perfectly. Can he do it again today? He'll be hoping so, that's for sure. Look at him, absolutely throwing the back end of that car to generate the uh, temperature into those rear tyres. Now, of course, if you're on the first few rows of the grid, you try and get as much temperature into the tyres as possible because you have to sit in your grid box the longest, waiting for all the cars to line up 
So the first four or five rows of the grid are parked up and those are the ones that have to wait for the uh, stragglers, if you like, right at the back of the pack to get themselves millimetrically perfect into their grid boxes. So all the time that uh, the likes of Jackson Evans and Jan van Lagen and Larry Tenforder are sitting there, they're losing valuable temperature out of the rubber. And uh, still, the final car, which is Jean-Baptiste Simonau, is not into the grid box. So it's an anxious time for the drivers right at the front of the pack to sit there and wait for those uh, cars to uh, line up before we can get the green flag from the marshal at the rear. There is the final car of Jean-Baptiste Simonau for BWT Lechner Racing into the grid box now. So we should get the green flag from the marshal at the rear, which means that the start sequence can get underway. Indeed, we get that green flag. Five red lights will light up. When they extinguish, we will be on and racing. Larry Tenvorder gives it an absolute footfall. It's a great start from Jackson Evans as well. So is Jackson gonna get to the inside of Larry Tenvorder? No, he doesn't. So Tenvorder stays ahead going into turn number one. But that really was a great start from Jackson Evans. The rest of the cars seem to get away all okay, but Larry Tenforder doing as he did yesterday. Once he's got his nose, oh, as one gets turned around from the middle order, that collects another one as well. Everyone else avoids, thankfully. Can they get going once again? I think we had a couple of safety cars as we've got one out onto the grass as well as they head onto the Parabolica, but we focus on what's happening at the front here because Jap Van Lagen has got past Jackson Evans to take up P2. So Tenvorder leads from now Jap Van Lagen. So two Netherlands racers together now, P1 and P2. Hopefully we'll get a replay of where Jacques Van Lagen, it must have been around the Parabolica where he got the better of Jackson Evans and went past. But Larry Tenvorda remains in front. Henrik Skoog, who of course benefited from the uh, two disqualifications yesterday in terms of his uh, finishing position in race number one. He's running in uh, P4 and Luca Rettenbach are looking good as well. So the front four cars then breaking away from the rest of the pack, as you can see. Mikael Ammermuller is on a bit of a charge as well as he needs to be. So there is the number two car of Julian Andlauer. And uh, we have got a safety car already. That will be for one of the stricken cars then. And I'm pretty right in saying that that car is Alex Arkinakas, which is uh, stuck and therefore the safety car has to come out. And Larry Tenvorda, uh, for all his good work, now sees the uh, margin that he'd built up between P1 and P2 reduced to zero because the safety car will pick them up. Now, hopefully, the recovery operation will be quite a quick one. Of course, all this eats into the 16-lap uh, and the time duration that is allowed for this race. Oh, actually, it's the number 50 car of Tim Zimmerman that uh, has got to be recovered rather than that of Alex Arkinaka. So Alex Arkinaka has obviously, obviously got going again or has uh, put himself into a position. So in fairness, between turns one and two, that's where Jan van Lagen got the better of uh, Jackson Evans. There you can see the Acker car and... So even at that point, uh, Jan van Lagen was ahead. And there we can see the number 77 car of Leon Koffler it is. Leon Koffler and uh, the car of uh, Tim Zimmerman getting together. Ah, uh, this was where uh, Alex Arkinaka then took to the grass. And uh, doing a good qualcast job there, to be honest with you. Uh, Leon Koffler managed to get the car going once again. But there you can see the bodywork rubbing against the uh, rear tyre meant that that car was not going to continue very far in the race, sadly. So uh, Leon Koffler's car is in. Uh, they will hastily try and uh, move that, although I'm getting the impression from the MSG HRT Motorsport that perhaps that car will not be continuing in the race. That's a great shame. So we await the recovery of the number 50 car of uh, Tim Zimmerman. And once that car is recovered, now where are the cars on the lap? Uh, they're heading into uh, turn number 12 now. So I would think even if uh, they get that car recovered, I think it's going to be too late for uh, the safety car lights to be switched off. And I think we'll have to do another lap behind the uh, safety car. Right, replay of the start here. Where did Jackson Evans lose out then? Because as you can see, he got a great start and almost troubled I reckon he just carried too much speed into turn number one, and that's when Jat van Lagen was able to get in the inside of him, potentially. But it was a real blistering start from both Jackson Evans and uh, Larry Tenvorder. 
And here we can see from the uh, back of the grid, every car bar one, uh, which was sluggish away, they did all manage to get away. Thankfully, uh, no contact and no problems. So they use all the runoff area, certainly in uh, turn one. And that is where Yat Van Lagen got past Jackson Evans. So through turn number one then, Jackson Evans ran wide. Yat Van Lagen was in the perfect position to say, thanks very much, I don't need that invitation twice, and dived up the inside. That was the contact between uh, Tim Zimmerman and uh, Leon Koffler. And there you can see the damage on the side of the uh, Leon Koffler car. Mm. He thinks that probably that car is definitely not going to be in the race now because we can see Leon Koffler walking away from the car, particularly despondent. As you can imagine, not been a great weekend for Leon Koffler, who didn't finish the first race and certainly isn't going to finish the second. So we remain behind the safety car then, and I am convinced that the safety car will come in at the end of this lap because there is no reason for it to stay out. The lights are still on currently. Uh, but I think the lights will go out and the safety car will come in and we will go back to racing and we will have... Well, we will have completed two of the... Uh, or three of the 16 laps by the time the safety car does come in. So the order then on screen, Ten Vorder, Van Lagen, Jackson Evans, then it's Henrik Skoog, Luguret and Backer and Igor Valilko. Ahead of Gustav Malia, uh, Bessler, then it's Amamula P9, Ertl and uh, Wolf with Dylan Pereira rounding out the top 12. The rest of the order, as you can see. The best of the uh, gentleman drivers is... Uh, I think it's uh, Matthias Jezerich. Stefan Rakoff is P2 with Skopanski P3. Best of the rookies, then, is at car number 15 running in P8, which is Burke Bessler. Uh, who finished, of course, P3 following the disqualifications yesterday. Still no word to say that the safety car is coming in, but I feel sure it must. Although it is uh, too late for the safety car to come in now uh, because the cars are rounding the final turn, so we're going to have another lap behind the safety car. Apologies for that, but uh, marshalling and uh, recovery teams doing their work as hard as they possibly can, as quick as they possibly can. Watching the replay of the start once again, and that was where Yat Van Lagen got past Jackson Evans. Going through turn number one. So, back with the live pictures again as they exit turn number one now behind the safety car. So we have uh, four championships, of course, and uh, that's the reason why we're still recovering the Alex Arkin Acker car. We saw it uh, mowing the lawn, didn't we, uh, around the Parabolica. And that's the car that's got to be recovered. And now I am uh, fairly confident that the safety car will be coming in at the end of this lap. Also, in is the number 10 car of Matthias Jezerich. Damage to the front of the car. You can see the number 10 car. So that has taken Matthias uh, Jezerich then. Uh, into the uh, pit lane, and that looks like that's going to be a race retirement as well, sadly. So the front splitter and corner there with uh, damage there. Now, of course, that's where the uh, radiators are in these uh, Porsche Carrera Cup cars. So Matthias Jezerich is out of the car and uh, will not be leading uh, that uh, amateur classification anymore. Uh, that will go to Stefan Raykopf, I would suggest now, who, of course, was uh, victorious uh, yesterday in the amateur class. So safety car is coming in at the end of this lap. And you can see now, Jan van Lagen, as he had to do yesterday, he's got to try and anticipate when Larry Tenvorder is going to give a foot full of throttle. And Larry Tenvorder does that now, uh, pushes the loud pedal through the floor of the car, tries to build up as much margin as he can between himself and Jan van Lagen. As they round the final turn now, and the race gets going proper, of course, absolutely no overtaking before you've passed the safety car line. And we are back to racing as we start lap four of uh, 16. Already seven tenths ahead is Larry Tenporter, then it's uh, Jat van Lagen, Jackson Evans, Henrik Skoog, Luca Rettenbacher, Igor Valilko, head of Gustav Malia. 
So the uh, top seven. Where's Mikhail Ammermuller in all of this? A P9. So uh, keep your eyes on Mikhail Ammermuller. He'll be trying to fight his way back up the order once again. You know what they say about safety cars. And here comes uh, Julian Andlauer trying to get past uh, Wagner now. Wagner was involved in some skirmishes yesterday. Around the Parabolica they go. What can Julian Andlauer do? Goes to the outside. He will now try and under, go underneath the car ahead of him. Does so, puts himself on the inside, job done. Good overtake there from Julian Andlauer. Mikhail Ammermuller is uh, really pushing Burke Bessler as well. Mikhail Ammermuller subsequently has not been able to do that quite yet, but it's a question of when, not if, isn't it? Uh, as Carlos Rivas making a move as well as they go through that uh, turn. Carlos Rivas holds on to... Uh, oh, but has such a huge lock-up. He ends up losing two, if not three places from uh, that move. No mistakes at the front of the pack, though. Larry Tenbolder got it all completely under control. Jackson Evans is coming under real pressure, though, from Henrik Skoog. A bit of a fight going on for that P3 place. There's Julian Andlauer. He's just overtaken, as you've seen, and he goes through. Jean-Baptiste Seminar remains at the back of the pack currently. And also there is uh, Carlos Rivas, but this is our race leader, Larry Tenvorder then. The margin is only eight tenths between himself and Jan van Lagen. They're beginning to stretch their legs, but it's a three-way fight for P3 now between Jackson Evans, Henrik Skoog and Luca Rettenbacher. That's where we need to focus our attention because Henrik Skoog is tracking everything that Jackson Evans is doing. Igor Valilko is under some pressure from Gustav Malia. And Lucas Ertl there in the uh, number 17 car, Julian Andlauer, uh, Nicholas Scholl, and uh, there the number 88 car of uh, Reese Bar for Forge Racing. So in replay, this was Carlos Rivas then, put himself on the inside, then carried so much speed, locked it up. And that's the start of the lockup, and he ended up losing uh, three places. Gains one, loses three. How do you do that? By locking those front wheels, the car running wide. And uh, all in his attempt to get past the Andreas Skabanski car. And this is Jean-Baptiste Simenauer, who was running right at the back of the pack. And obviously problems there for the uh, uh, BWT Lechner racing car of Jean-Baptiste Simenauer. He's another race retirement. Run lap five of 16 and Mikhail Ammermuller. Having got past the car of uh, Gustav Malia, he is now tracking the Igor Valilko car. Mikhail Ammermuller is on something of a mission here and is one very much to watch because if he can dispose of the car ahead of him which is driven by Igor Valilko, the overdrive by Huber racing driver then he can start to harry those that are in podium places potentially and that's what Mikhail Ammermuller needs to do to get his charge back on track once again following a torrid time of it yesterday so ten to P1, Van Lagen, Evans, Skoog, Rettenbacker then it's Valilko, but behind Valilko in P7 now is Mikhail Ammermuller, having got past Malia and uh, Bessler in the space of just one lap. Sandra Kaibach runs really wide there. So all these cars are very, very equal in terms of uh, performance. But Mikhail Ammermuller with so much uh, experience in uh, the Porsche Carrera Cup and also in the Super Cup, he knows these cars inside out. I would think you'd struggle to find anyone that uh, has a better knowledge as uh, Henrik Skoog tries to put himself to the outside of uh, Jackson Evans. And now comes to the inside. Now, if Henrik Skoog can stay alongside Jackson Evans, but he's not able to. Jackson has closed the door. Is that Mikhail Ammermuller that's gone off to the back? Or was it Julian Andlauer? It is Ammermuller. Ammermuller is out. So Ammermuller, who was really charging through the field, you can see there's damage to the car. We'll get a replay, I'm sure, of what happened there, but Ammermuller is out of the race. So a disaster for Mikhail Ammermuller. Well, he'll put this Hockenheim weekend uh, to bed and think never again. It was a disaster for Mikhail Ammermuller this weekend. So here, the three-way fight for P3 that's continuing with uh, Jackson Evans for the moment, able to hold off Henrik Skoog and Luca Rettenbacker. There is Henrik Skoog then in the number 20 car. Another one of the overdrive uh, racing by Huber cars. Really pushing Jackson Evans. What happened to Mikhail Ammermuller? So Ten Vorder with a seconds margin over Jat van Lagen for now. 
than it's Evans. Burke Bessler is looking lively here, isn't he? As he's trying to track uh, Gustav Malia and try and convert P8 to P7. Hasn't been able to do it thus far. Right, let's take a look here. This is Mikhail Amamula then. Well, he goes to turn in, and the gap that he wants to turn into is uh, full of the Gustav Malia car. And you can see that it caused damage to uh, Mikhail Amamula. So Gustav Malia came from a way back, but to be fair, I'm glad I'm not a race steward, but uh, regrettably, Mikhail Amamula, the bespectacled Mikhail Amamula, will have had enough of uh, this weekend. He's out of the race. So, Larry Tenforder leading from Jan van Lagen. Jackson Evans and, wow, Luca Rettenbacher gets past Henrik Skoog. Didn't quite see the overtake live, but Luca Rettenbacher certainly meant that. So he is ahead of Henrik Skoog now. BWT Lechner Honors being left with uh, the number two car at the moment of Julian Andlauer. Uh, Tony Wolf there in the number 14 machine, currently running in P10. So there is the number 14 car of uh, Tony Wolf, who has uh, Dylan Pereira for company. So they round the uh, final turn. Burke Bessler then, the uh, number 15 car for Car Collection Motorsport. Ten Vorder leads from Van Lagen, Evans, Rettenbacker, Skoog, Valilko. So Rettenbacker fancies his chances of a podium here. The only thing preventing that at the moment is the Jackson Evans car, which is running in uh, P3. So this is how Rettenbacker then sold Skoog something of a dummy, and then Skoog has no alternative but to yield and allow Rettenbacker through. This was a huge lockup. Is that Tony Wolf? No, it is uh, the car of uh, Wagner. So there is Larry Ten Vorder. Jan van Lagen is maintaining the chase here. He's just taken a tenth out of Larry Ten Vorder. But a tenth is not a laugh as we reach half distance in this uh, Carrera Cup race. Tony Wolf looks like he's uh, just managed to get past uh, another car. Just caught the uh, back end of that image on our shot there. The all pink there car there is Julian Andlauer. It's not Mikael Amamula. He's out. Larry Tenvorder, P1. Van Lagen, P3. And around is the number 94 car of Janis Fitcher. But he manages to get it going from there. Janis Fitcher, of course, who had a uh, crash in quali and was not able to take part in race number one. Well, again, it's the uh, hairpin, I think, that... Uh, Oh, yes, just the almost an innocuous touch, but it's enough to unsettle the back end of the car. Uh, that touch coming from Georgi Donchev, the Huber racing driver, and Janis Fitcher lucky not to be collected by anybody else at that point. So as the uh, Carrera Cup car bounces its way round here, good presence of mind to get it back into first gear and uh, pointing in the right direction again, avoiding any carnage. So, seesaw action. Ah, as that number seven car of Donchev has gone no further. Now, where is that car positioned on the track? And depending upon where that car is positioned on the track, we'll uh, decide whether we need to have a uh, safety car once again. So, it's around the uh, final turn. So, there you can see, obviously, there is a problem for the Donchev car. Oh, no, he's uh, parked it well out of the way, thankfully. And uh, therefore will not cause a problem, but he's another retiree from the uh, race. And uh, Christoph Huber in the uh, pit, uh, pit box there. Uh, Janis Fitcher then, who had a turnaround. It looks like it's going to be a race retirement for Janis Fitcher as well, who's had a weekend to forget. Oh, dear. The uh, damage there means that the uh, wheel can't be retrieved very easily. And... This is a lesson of how to remove a wheel, part one. Deft use of a hammer might be needed there, I fear. Right, this three-way fight for P4 is uh, quite exciting. Luca Rettenbacker has not made the moves that I thought he would in terms of getting on terms with uh, Jackson Evans. In fact, I would say that Skugan Valilko, if anything, 
are getting a little bit closer to Luca Rettenbacker now, having Rettenbacker having got past Henrik Skoog a couple of laps ago. Ten Vorder is stretching his legs as well. He's got 1.3 seconds over Jat van Lagen. And we have just six laps remaining of this uh, Carrera Cup race two. From here, of course, we head off to Most in the Czech Republic. Then it's Norris Ring, Zandvoort, and Nürburgring, Hockenheim, and Saxon Ring. Good season for the uh, Porsche Carrera Cup and making two visits on the DTM package. Julian Andlau then. And uh, trying to uh, haul in the uh, Gustav Malia car. Gustav Malia, another one that's uh, changed teams this year, has gone with uh, Forge Racing. Was, of course, with the uh, Project One team. And the best of the AM drivers is Stefan Rakoff, who is currently running in the uh, P17 position overall, but he is the best of the amateur drivers. There are four separate classifications in the Porsche Carrera Cup. There's the championship overall, then there is the uh, AM Drivers' Championship, Teams' Championship, and, of course, the Rookies' Championship as well. The best rookie is Jackson Evans, who is uh, P3 in the race. So, Stefan Rakoff then, doing a very good job there in the number 33 car. Finished the race overall P13 yesterday, but, of course, take, took the honours of the uh, amateur drivers. And is looking very dominant in that AM classification at the moment. Igor Valilko, P6. Right behind him is... Uh, Henrik Skoog. So Valilko put himself ahead of uh, Henrik Skoog. The order then, Van Tenvorder, Van Lagen, Evans, Rettenbacker, Valilko, Skoog, Malia, Andlauer, uh, Bessler, and Dylan Pereira into the top ten. So all of a sudden now, Luca Rettenbacker, and uh, Igor Valilko are really just pulling away from Henrik Skoog. Skoog hasn't got the pace that these two have, but of course the more that they fight, that will allow Henrik Skoog back into it. Luca Rettenbacker to the inside. Valilko runs very wide. He's able to slot in behind, and uh, therefore Henrik Skoog was not able to take advantage of that wide running. Jackson Evans in P3, out on his own, some four seconds down, three seconds down rather on uh, Jan van Lagen in P2. Larry Tenvorder continuing to do a great job out front. One and a half second margin he's got. So Luca Rettenbacker, and now can you see how Henrik Skoog has come back into this battle here? This is a three-way fight going on for P4. And we're not far away from um, Julian Andlauer being involved in this mix as well. So, Luca Rettenbacker, for the moment, tries to make that Carrera Cup car as wide as possible and deny the opportunity for uh, Igor Valilko and Henrik Skoog to come through. But you rather get the impression now he's having to defend much harder than he is focused on driving ahead. So, rearview mirror is full of the car of Igor Valilko. And I promised you that Julian Andlau was going to get involved in this mix. Well, allow me one or two more corners, and he's going to be in there as going very, very right there. Rettenbacker almost opened the door. Now, surely Valilko will get a better run here. And a Rettenbacker, well, you can see he's metaphorically sticking his elbows out there to try and defend this position. Look at this, the three are almost welded together. As they go into the hairpin, this could be a huge parts bill, or it could be a brilliant overtake. As it transpires, it's none of them. How disappointing. <laughs> I really thought it was all coming there. So, uh, Luca Rettenbacker, he saved that, really. Made a mistake through uh, turn number three and four. And that just allowed everyone else to get much closer. And in the event, it was a bit of a damp squib through the hairpin. Four laps remaining. And I said, did I not, just a few moments ago, stand by for Andlau to get involved in this. And here he comes now. So, Henrik Skoog, instead of focusing on attacking, is having to think about defending. 
so whilst the others are all escaping up the road all of a sudden it's become a five or six way fight or maybe even seven for this p4 position well credit here is due in my opinion uh, to Luca Rettenbacher, who is not being phased by this huge train of cars that's behind him. As we all head up into turn number one now. So once again, Igor Valilko tries to sell Luca Rettenbacher a bit of a dummy here to try and go underneath him, and he's done it! Surely he's done it! Yes, he has! He sold him the perfect dummy! Luca Rattenbacher should have seen that coming, but he didn't. And now, all of a sudden, Henrik Skoog fancies his chances as well. So, Luca Rattenbacher had done such a great job in defence. He's losing two places here. Stand by, Julian Andlauer in the all-pink BWT Lechner racing car. He will try and come through as well. So, Rattenbacher and Skoog here are going to be in a drag race down to the flat turn seven. Rettenbacher's going to lose out here, I'm sure, because the inside becomes the outside for the next turn. Oh, they are so close, and that opens up the door for Julian Andlauer. Three abreast. So Andlauer here has taken great advantage here as one goes wide. And that was the car of Gustav Malia, and Berke Bessler is trying to come into this as well. We knew it was going to end up like this with so many cars. God, you wouldn't want to be at the front of that pack trying to defend it, my goodness me. And the big beneficiary, in my opinion, is Julian Andlauer there. He very cleverly took advantage of everything that was going on. And look, has found himself ahead of Luca Rettenbacher. Wow, what brilliant racing. And I have to say, credit to all the drivers, because clean, tidy, no panel rubbing, no nerfing. I really thought at one moment through that hairpin we were going to end up with a skip full of spare Porsche Carrera Cup car parts, but that wasn't the case. And credit to the drivers for that. Fantastic stuff. Right, that was where the dummy was sold. And Igor Valilko said, ta very much. Then, of course, Luca Rettenbacher gets a little love tap from Henrik Skoog. That plays into the hands of Julian Andlauer because he's got more momentum. Oh, that was really great to watch. So, uh, we continue for two more laps. Luca Rettenbacher trying hard to fight here against Henrik Skoog, and he does stay ahead of uh, Henrik Skoog. Julian Andlau and Igor Valilko, the big two beneficiaries there. And as I say, I think the best of those, really, uh, you've got to give credit to Julian Andlau, who was just so aware of everything that was going on. Berke Bessler and uh, Dylan Pereira. Berke Bessler ahead of Dylan Pereira and uh, Gustav Malia. You always get good racing with the uh, Carrera Cup. And we're on to lap 15 of uh, 16 for the lead car now, Larry Tenvorder, who's lost a couple of tenths to Jat van Lagen. Here comes Berke Bessler then on Henrik Skoog around uh, the inside here. He squeezes him, squeezes him. He's onto the grass. Berke Bessler has put himself ahead of uh, Henrik Skoog. Well, that was close. Good driving from Henrik Skoog to be able to control it while he was across the grass as well. Dylan Pereira wants to buy into it also, as does Gustav Malia and uh, Tony Wolf, who's in uh, P11 at the moment. We are on the last lap of, well, a, a hugely exciting Carrera Cup Deutschland race where all of the action has been going on for P4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, rather than at the front because um, Larry Tenvorder and uh, Jan van Lagen, uh, there they are, P1 and P2 with uh, Jackson Evans out in his own race. Really lonely fella in uh, P3. So Jat van Lagen for Forge Racing has tried to take everything he can to Larry Ten Vorder and he's got the remainder of this lap and no more within which to do it. Larry Ten Vorder then on track to make it two out of two. What a weekend he will have had, but Jat van Lagen 
throwing everything out of the car to try and get on terms. As uh, Larry Tanvorder rounds the sax turn, heads towards the 13-14 sequence, into the final two turns, Larry Tenvorda then, as he heads towards the timing line. Can he make it two out of two, barring disaster? It's double bubble for Larry Tenvorda. He wins two races. Jan van Lagen, P2. It'll be some time before we see Jackson Evans. There he is now. He breaks the beam to take P3. And in P4, it's Valilko ahead of Julian Andlauer. Then a whole gaggle of cars, including Luca Rettenbacher, P6. Uh, Burke Bessler, P7. Dylan Pereira, P8. Henrik Skoog, P9. And P10 goes the way of Tony Wolf. What a race. Still the cars are crossing. Stefan Raykopf will be the best of the AMs. Whew. Larry Tenvorder. What a great job he's done once again. Looked completely unfazed. Not much that Yat van Lagen could do to try and take that to uh, Larry Tenvorder in the end. And uh, Jackson Evans, as I say, he was kind of out on his own. In replay, this was Bessler then. Henrik Skoog tried to get back to the tarmac there, as you can see, and ended up having to take the curbs, paint, grass, you name it. Well, he was squeezed, there's no question about that. Dylan Pereira almost able to take advantage, uh, but not quite. So good to see those uh, replays then. So much going on in the course of that race. And this man, Larry Tenvorder, once again, the winner. So Larry Tenvorder then having a perfect start to his uh, season. Looking very much uh, championship material, it has to be said. Of course, he's had the uh, rookie championship in the Carrera Cup. That was a couple of years ago. Started his race in the uh, Porsche Sports uh, Cup. And uh, Larry Tenvorder actually sat alongside me in the comms booth um, last year. Actually, a jolly good racing driver and not a bad talker as well. So we'll uh, bring the car into the pit lane now, and Christoph Huber once again will be uh, very, very pleased with his uh, charges. So this was the checkered flag then that awaited Larry Tenvorda to make it two out of two for this weekend. And the delight on the uh, pit wall. One, Mr. Christoph Huber. And Jap van Lagen for Fort Racing. Fort Racing doing a good job. Of course, they'll be hoping that the car is deemed uh, to regulations following the uh, Park Firm 8 because uh, they disqualified yesterday, as was Jackson Evans, who's pulled his car in for P3. And Larry Tenvorda then climbs to top the car. Jap <laughs> van Lagen <laughs> and Christoph Huber positively lumping him <laughs> by way of congratulations. So Christoph Huber and Larry Tenvorda then embrace team principal and driver. And uh, Jap van Lagen there. Jap van Lagen, of course, spends much of his life as a driver coach. And, He's a great guy, uh, as is Larry Tenvorder. Jackson Evans, of course, coming from the uh, Porsche Carrera Cup Australia and uh, making something of a debut in uh, the uh, Carrera Cup. Hans Burns camps there. You can just see to the uh, right-hand side of the picture, of course, uh, responsible for uh, the Team Project 1 JBR uh, amalgamation. And uh, he'll be pretty pleased with what uh, Jackson has delivered over the course of uh, this weekend. Expecting uh, Thomas Volkmar to get down there and uh, uh, get a quick word with uh, our race winner in due course. We 
take a look at the uh, pictures now. So there you can see once again, it's almost a fight between uh, Christoph Huber and the dance from Jan van Lagen. <laughs> the competition between the two of them. <laughs> it's called the uh, P factor, Porsche factor. <laughs> Brilliant. So up next then, uh, of course, the uh, podium ceremony to come. Looking forward to that. So the uh, guys all behind the uh, podium in the podium preparation area. Of course, there are uh, two podiums, uh, one for the uh, championship overall, or for the race overall, rather, and uh, one for the uh, amateur classification as well. And at any moment now, they will be uh, called out onto the uh, podium. And there is Larry Tenvorder on the top step once again. And Jan van Lagen and uh, Jackson Evans. Anthem time. So the anthem plays out for one Mr. L for Larry Tembora. And here comes the uh, trophy presentations then. Wonderful trophies being presented. Alexander Polish then, who we saw down there on the, uh, on the grid at the head uh, at the start of the race, uh, presents a really rather lovely trophy to uh, Larry Tenvorder. Uh, then it is the turn of Bastian Schramm then to make the uh, trophy presentation to Superman, Jan van Lagen. <laughs> and uh, offering congratulations to uh, Christoph Huber as well. Uh, Jackson Evans from Huri Isaac uh, receives his uh, trophy. So uh, we just await Mr. Christoph Huber to receive his to add to the uh, burgeoning Huber Racing uh, Trophy Cabinet. And uh, once again, he, of course, congratulates and uh, makes due credit to the team that put together uh, the race winning combo so they pose for the photos before the bubbly is burst open I said of course yesterday Van Lagen did it better than Tim Vorder personally. Uh, ah, I really rather think Christoph Huber's being ambushed here. <laughs> Deservedly so. Uh, Mr. Christoph Huber gets uh, uh, more than a little uh, champagne. Uh, but there we have it. Uh, two Porsche Carrera Cup races done and dusted to get the season underway. And what a season. Uh, based on uh, what we've seen today, what a season it is uh, going to be. Never fails to disappoint the uh, Porsche Carrera Cup. Yeah, Van Lagen there with uh, Christoph Huber. And uh, there, uh, of course, Christoph's driver, uh, Larry Tenvorder. There we have it then. Races one, races two, done, dusted. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you for the next round. Bye-bye for now.
Und dann fügt ihm noch die Kollegen das Interview mit dem Lachen mit vorne. Er hat das gleiche Kurzspiel geschafft wie Michael Hammerglock vor einem Jahr. Der hat außerdem einen Doppelerfolg gefeiert in 2018. Allerdings ähm, ja, war das auch die einzige Siege, die er dann 2018 gefeiert hat. Da wünschen wir Lachen ein bisschen mehr Glück. Aber wir wird mit sieben Punkten dieses Wochenende äh, nach Hause fahren. Lachen mit vorne mit 50 Punkten.